Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to talk about Chinese medicine, specifically acupuncture, as I am joined by Dr. Alex Joannou. Alex has been working in the field for a while. He's trained a lot of people, and we're going to be talking about the benefits of acupuncture and how You know, it's connected to your mind, body, and spirit, and how Alex helps his patients find true peace and healing. So, Dr. Joannou, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis. It's a pleasure. Well, why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm a a GP. In Australia, we call it a GP. I think in America, you call it family physician. I've been doing that job for just over 40 years now. And uh, for the last 25 years, I've been an acupuncturist. Initially, I was trained at the University of Sydney in medicine, and and that's the only form of uh, health about body that I knew. There was no other way of looking at the body as far as I understood. And then in the early 90s, I developed uh, Crohn's disease. For those of you that don't know, it's a, a chronic inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, first I knew about it was I basically collapsed at work and I thought, what's going on here? I just thought I needed a holiday because I'd been working so hard for the previous couple of years and took myself off to a doctor and found that I had two four-inch abscesses in my abdomen, very nasty, and uh, uh, Crohn's disease, this inflammatory bowel disease. So within about a week, I had an operation which removed two feet of intestine Fortunately, it was successful. They got all the all the diseased tissue. And at the end, before I was discharged from hospital, I asked the doctor, the surgeon, what should I do in terms of diet? And he says, eat anything you like, you're cured. And I go, you're beauty. And, but within six weeks, I started getting symptoms again. And a few months later, I had to go on to uh, steroids, anti-inflammatory drugs, which the effect of chronic steroids on the body can be quite severe in terms of side effects, and I was well aware of that. So that started me looking for alternatives, initially with uh, mega doses of vitamins and gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free, meat-free diet, and things like this, which temporarily helped. But uh, then the symptoms recurred even worse, and that got me looking to a shiatsu therapist which for those of you who don't know, it's a Japanese massage technique, as well as herbal medicine, and I even had iridology to look at my eyes. I was prepared to do anything to avoid further surgery, given that you've only got so so much intestine, you can keep cutting bits out, but you can only go for so long. And um, yeah, that got me on the path of looking at Chinese medicine, which it just so happened a few weeks later that there was a the Australian Medical Acupuncture College put on a a, a one-day free uh, introductory course near my town. 
So I went along to it and I was just amazed that all the questions this Chinese doctor was asking was questions that weren't uh, normally on the doctor's list of questions. And uh, they were looking at, I realized he was looking at the body from the perspective of the autonomic nervous system, how the sympathetic nerves were going and the parasympathetic nerves. And um, so that sparked my interest. And this was some 25 years ago now. And I started to offer acupuncture to my patients initially as a last resort. You know, they tried all the drugs for their problems and uh, got them into trying acupuncture. And lo and behold, they seemed to improve and told their friends about it. And I kept getting more and more people coming to me. But things really took off about 10 years ago when I had a, uh, a patient that I've been treating for uh, widespread arthritis, osteoarthritis, and I was using a new technique, which I've come to call transformational acupuncture. And uh, after she, well, within a week or two, she was able to get off the, the opioid drugs, which was obviously a huge plus for her. Um, but a few weeks later, she asked me if she could stop her antidepressants because she felt so well and happy. And so I quizzed her more about this, and she had apparently been on antidepressants for 16 years. And and in fact, the previous year, her GP tried to get her off antidepressants, and within a few weeks, they recurred. The symptoms of depression recurred again, so the patient went back on it. So I was quite cautious in withdrawing her. We withdrew her over the anti, off the antidepressants over a couple of months, but she, she's never looked back, and that was now 12 years ago. She hasn't had to go back onto opioids, and she hasn't had uh, any antidepressants. And not only that, she hasn't needed any acupuncture for the last uh, 10, 10 years or so. So it's been, it was a massive change for her. I kept telling my wife about this and other stories of patients improving, and my wife's also a medical doctor and said, look, you've got to document this. So then I said, oh, okay. After a few few times, I got the hint, I better better assess what's going on here. You know, it's the basis of the scientific meta method is observation. So over the next year, I followed half a dozen patients with um, who had depression. So this was her, their main problem. It wasn't incidental to anything else. It, they were depressed. And over the, a few weeks to months, they were all improving. Often within two months, their uh, depression symptoms had gone away and and weaning them off antidepressants and uh, able to keep them off. Uh, one patient uh, who was really quite depressed and she was bedridden with migraines, within a few weeks, the migraines started settling down and and she was so bedridden that she could only get, get ready to take her kids to school and then we'd come back home and then crash in bed for the rest of the day until it was time to pick them up from school. And what I noticed was happening was that with the acupuncture, she was getting certain thoughts in her mind. Realizations, I guess, is the best word for it. So she realized there was a connection to, between when she started thinking certain thoughts, she could actually feel the beginnings of a migraine headache coming on. So she made a resolution to avoid those thoughts, that thought pattern. And so her migraines subsided dramatically. Then it became obvious that she wasn't happy where she was. She she was actually a trained lawyer and had moved from uh, the city to the countryside, what in Australia we call a tree change. Uh, that says where you, you move to, literally to the country where there's lots of trees and get in touch with nature. And she and her husband had done that and were on a small farm. And it was several kilometres from the nearest town, which was quite a small town. But she realised that she actually wasn't happy. It was the realisations while she was lying lying on the bed having the acupuncture that uh, spurred her and then with conversation with me, why don't you talk to her husband about it? And it turned out the husband didn't really like uh, living in the country either. But neither of them wanted to speak to the other one about it because they were so, uh, you know, invested in helping their partner enjoy the tree change. And but it, it turned out the husband had to work away from home because they weren't earning enough money from the farm. And so she was often quite lonely. So she began to talk to them about these things and they realised this wasn't suiting them. 
And within a, literally a few months, they uh, ended up selling the property and moved to Europe, of all places, from Australia, uh, where his family lived. And they've been joyful and happy ever since. Uh, I, I rang her literally the, the day to year to the day of when I started treatment to see how she had progressed because I hadn't seen her in, been in touch with her for months. And she was telling me how happy she and her husband were and that they were, the kids were doing well at school and that she decided to, uh, uh, she was, she and her husband were just going out for the night to the opera. And it was just a fantastic life. And she was, she had got a job using her talents as a lawyer for a non profit organization. So it was a complete uh, life change. And that was sort of at that time I hit on the name transformational acupuncture because witness that it really did transform lives. So I was doing that more and more and became known in the town I'm at, which is Coffs Harbour, which is a town of about 80,000 people halfway between Sydney and Brisbane, a coastal town, of course, with a name like Coffs Harbour. So um, so I got known by the doctors and they're sending me their patients uh, for treatment for depression. But uh, this was now about five years ago and I realised well, I can't help enough people in my lifetime. I'm now in my uh, mid to late 60s and thinking, well, you know, I can't die and take all this knowledge with me. And there's so many million people in the world with depression. I think the latest estimate is 280 million people. So that's when I thought I've got to train other acupuncturists in this method. So for the last five years, I've been training acupuncturists in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane, this method. And most recently, uh, I've been teaching some Canadians. I went to Canada and teed up with some people there, and now I'm doing it as an online training. So it's a, a long-winded answer to your question, I think. <laughs> but Oh, absolutely. Well, for those who don't know, uh, kind of give us a brief description of what acupuncture actually is. Yes, yeah. Well, initially developed based on the Chinese discoveries of meridians, as they're called, or uh, channels, if you like, along the various parts of the body. And along the along these channels, there's uh, various points, which we call acupuncture points. And when you insert a needle in that point, it stimulates the nervous system, which in turn activates the endocrine, that's the uh, hormone-producing organs in the body, as well as able to influence the autonomic nervous system. That's the sympathetic nerves with the fight and flight reaction and the autonomic, uh, the parasympathetic nerves, which are uh, designed to nurture and nourish the body and build, build tissue up. And uh, this has been discovered by the Chinese some 2000 years ago. It, and they had discovered the first 50 most important points as far away as 2000 years ago. And if you insert needles in certain points, it has an influence over the body. And the system I've developed uses that knowledge together with the Hindu system of chakras, because I discovered that the, that the chakras or the vortex of energy centers, which the uh, Ayurvedic people saw as being up and down the spine, actually correlates with acupuncture points, which also correlates with the connections to endocrine organs in the body and nervous uh, plexuses or junctions of nerves. So if you if you know where to insert the needles, you can have an influence over the chakras, which has an influence over the whole body. And not only the body, but the mind and the spirit as well. So how does your form of acupuncture differ from the the regular or the known form of acupuncture. Yes. Well, it's it's interesting because it's not the the acupuncture points, it's the the combination of the points that are used. Uh, when you when you learn acupuncture, they talk about they might list twenty different points that can have an influence over a certain problem, medical problem, and they leave it to your imagination and intuition and hunches, I guess, to to work out which points to use. But uh, with the system I've uh, developed, it's the uh, uh, specific points in the specific order that has the influence, the, the impact. And even though a lot of the points 
used by acupuncturists every day. It's when it's in the certain order that it has a much more powerful effect. If that makes sense. <laughs> makes perfect sense. So if I took your your form of acupuncture, what, mm. what kind of outcome could I expect? Yeah, yeah. well, with, with mood, it improves people's mood significantly. If you're depressed over a space of like eight treatments once a week, Depression can dramatically diminish, even if uh, you've had the problem for years. And, and with repeated treatments over a period of time, successfully got a large number of people off the, off the medication. But it also makes anxious people less anxious and stressed people less stressed. And even if you don't have diagnosed mental disorder, you know, just normal people going through everyday stuff, it really helps to focus the mind. I've had lots of people who've come to me who meditate. When they have their treatment, they find that they're able to get into a much deeper space than they do when they're just meditating at home. And it really does enhance or in the, this effect. So even normal well people find that they get into a space where they have realizations about how they're running their life or how they could do things better. Well, tell us how depression is diagnosed and measured. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, it's interesting because doctors are trained to look for disease. That's how doctors operate. You know, when you go to medical school, you learn all about the normal range of blood tests. Uh, you know how to uh, tissue is biopsied and you look for abnormal tissue. So when when you go to the doctor for any medical problem, they focus on your symptoms, which is how your body's manifesting problems to you. So you complain about your cough or whatever the problem is, and then the doctor will examine you looking for abnormalities. Too often, nothing is to be found. A quite common the situation is chronic fatigue, where the patient has all the symptoms under the sun, and the doctor says there's nothing wrong with you. Well, the patient says that's rubbish because I feel terrible. I don't have any energy to do all the things that I normally do. But as far as the doctor's concerned, he's, he's right in that there's nothing abnormal. So it's all about things not functioning well. And doctors aren't very good at that. The World Health Organization has defined health as being a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity, but that's exactly what the doctor's looking for, disease and infirmity. So they're not really interested in you as such once they say there's nothing wrong with you. Now, with depression, um, it's not actually a disease as such. It's classified along with all mental, other mental health problems as being a disorder. Uh, that is, things isn't working normally without specifying that there's abnormal tissue, which there isn't. So how do they find out whether you're depressed or not is by asking you a series of questions and then filling out a score sheet like a DAS-21, which is Depression, Anxiety, Stress Scale, with 21 questions. And depending on how you answer it, the doctor diagnoses you as being depressed or not, combined with symptoms like a loss of interest in, in your hobbies, poor sleep, poor appetite, and so forth. So the trouble with doctors in this situation, though, is if you're not feeling particularly depressed anymore on the medication, they say you're fine, go go your way. But there's a long way. There's a world of difference between having an absence of depression and having the presence of happiness. Doctors don't know how to deliver that, and drugs don't deliver that. All the antidepressants do is make people less depressed. It doesn't actually make them happy. So this is where acupuncture comes in because, uh, you know, I've literally had people laughing <laughs> during treatments. They, they get a sense of joy. One patient said as she was driving home, she started singing to herself, and she said she hadn't done that for years. Things like this start to happen, and I hear these stories all the time from patients, and it's uh, it's what drives me to uh, to come on a, a show like uh, Living the Dream because I've seen so many patients be able to turn their life around and live their dreams, and think I've got to get this message out and train as many people as possible. So I've actually uh, sold my medical practice, which I've had for, as I say, over forty years, 
sold that a year ago and uh, focus on on spreading the word and training other acupuncturists in this method. Absolutely. Well, tell us about any upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Well, as I say, I've just uh, started online training of this method. Um, some acupuncturists say they can't afford it, but uh, very reasonably priced. But I've had uh, one one woman in Canada, when I was there, I gave her some treatments and she was blown away with the treatments. And she wanted her acupuncturist to learn and the acupuncturist wasn't that interested. And then the patient was so insistent, she said, well, I'll pay for you to do the course and you can practice on me during the course, giving me treatments. And that way she gets her money back. So that was that was a really a novel novel solution. Um, with the uh, how I assess the acupuncture, uh, the uh, the severity of depression and and anxiety and so forth is I've developed what I call a mind body spirit scale, which asks a lot more questions than the depression anxiety stress scale, and it has questions like asking you how safe you feel and uh, and how happy you are. So it gives a much wider definition of of a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So that enables people to have treatments long after their depression has gone, but still able to improve them their life so they feel happier and happier and more joyful. Okay. So I've been training acupuncturists in using this scale so they can assess for themselves how their patients are going. Okay, well, throw out your contact info. So if there's any acupuncturists out there, just so people can keep up with everything that you're Yes. Yeah, especially if any of your uh, listeners have their own acupuncturists, uh, uh, get them to get in contact with me. Uh, my website is stickittodepression.com. And I have a button on there that says start here. And in the takes you through a questionnaire to sort out whether you're a patient or an acupuncturist or a medical doctor who's interested in finding out more about what I'm doing. So if anyone co- wants to contact me that way, I'll be, uh, I'll be in touch with them. Yeah, and I like that name, Stick It to Depression. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, oh. yeah. Well, it really uh, sort of expresses the my aim quite clearly, really. Absolutely. We'll close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if that was something that I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any brief final thoughts you have for the listeners. Uh, um, no, as I say, if they they themselves have acupuncture or they know of an acupuncturist or someone of that ilk who's interested, to get them to get in contact with me as soon as possible. Because, uh, you know, the, as I say, there's 280 million people in the world with depression and that's enough to keep every acupuncturist busy for the rest of their lives, I'm sure. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, stick it to depression.com. Please be sure to check out Dr. Alex's website and, you know, check out his training. If you can share this to as many people as possible and please be sure to follow. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson 102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As usual, thank you for listening. And Dr. Alex, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your expertise. Well, it's my pleasure, Curtis. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.